Hi, this is Jared Davidson, and today we're going to look at how to whiten teeth and boost cutters using Sony Vegas Pro. <laughs> Okay, I got the idea for this video after watching Curtis Judd's video on how to whiten teeth using DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve's awesome software, and that's the way to go for color correction, color grading. Uh, but I just wondered, how could you do it inside Sony Vegas Pro in a, in a quick and easy way? And I am no color grader, I'm a professional. I'm just showing you guys how to do something that's a very overlooked feature in any NLE, really, and it's just secondary color correction. And you can use it to do so many things, like whiten teeth, or isolating a certain color, creating a color mask, and then boosting that color. So let's see how to whiten teeth in Sony Vegas Pro. Yeah, here we are in Sony Vegas, and when doing any kind of color correction work, the first thing to do is to go and open up your video scopes. And you can do that by going to View, and in Vegas Pro 13, you would want to go to Window down here, and, found, and find video scopes, or you could use Control alt 2 So here they are, it's too small, make them a bit bigger. And what we're gonna do first is, I shot this with a pretty flat profile. I think I used the Sinlight D profile in the GH4, and I used a warm light, and there was some reflection of the green screen um, and I got some some spill on my face. I got some an over here on my beard I've got some um, yellow light spill that I'm gonna correct and that kind of that spill the color of the spill looks pretty similar to the yellow in my teeth So I can go ahead and remove both those colors at the same time whiten my teeth and remove that yellow spill But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the image more contrast so go to Vegas's video effects and scroll down to levels here's the levels right here and you can drag them on to the clip or you could go straight in to the event effects tab and find them that way okay so levels is open now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the contrast by looking at this waveform and uh, I'm gonna bring this up to the hundred and to zero and bring it down to zero to give it its full dynamic range um, so let's watch let's first crush down the blacks over here we're not crushed, make black, black, true black, and there you go. It's touching the bottom there, and I'm going to do the same with the top. There you go. So I have more contrast in the image, that's much better, but you can see it, it really brings out that, that yellow, yellowy spill on my face, and my teeth look really yellow. They don't normally look so yellow, but this yellow light accentuates the yellow. So let's go ahead and fix that. And the way we're gonna do that is we are going to use the secondary color corrector. Just taking a quick look, nothing, nothing in the vetroscope goes outside of this range, which means that everything's within the legal limits for the colors. Everything looks okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that, that ugly yellow cast and also whiten the teeth. So close levels, we can go to secondary color corrector. That's over here, color corrector second secondary same thing okay now the first thing I want to do is I need to select a color to isolate so right here select color range effect range rather and I'm going to choose one of this this darker yellow color here on the tooth right there and now what I want to do is I want to show the the mask you can see there's some yellow on my face which is very similar to the yellow on my on my teeth but I need to open up this mask so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Limits Luminance, and we're going to bring this low down. You see much more of the teeth are becoming visible. And bring this high up. We don't want too much of the face. I know this side has a yellow cast, so I'm going to leave that as is for now. Then go down to Limit Saturation. Same, same thing. Don't want too much of the face. We've got lots of the teeth right there. Let's bring that low down a bit, up a bit. And we can kind of blend it by using the smooth, the smooth dial over here. But we don't want too much of the face, so we have to really tweak, tweak things until we get more teeth, less face. I do want some of the side of the face to get rid of this yellow, yellow cast. 
And the last thing I usually tweak is the limit U, but you have to go back and forth between the different dials to get the mask that you want. And um, I'm going to see if I move the center, but if that helps. You have to move things very delicately. Right there. That helps a bit. I see more of the teeth and less of the face. Um, and opening the width, closing the width, keeping, I think that we should keep the width closed so we isolate the cutter nicely. Okay, and we go back to these other dials and keep tweaking until getting even more of the teeth. I'm getting a bit of a yellow rim light over here, which I would be removing, which I think is okay. Getting the face there. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want too much of the face. I'm gonna bring that smooth control down. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm gonna uncheck the mask, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to reduce the saturation of my teeth and the yellow cast on my face. So let's do that first. Okay, there you go. Bringing that down. Bringing that down. You don't want to overdo it. Just a bit. Okay, I think that's fine for now. And to help it out, I'm going to increase the gamma right here. So as you can see, the teeth are whitening nicely. We don't want to overdo it, otherwise they get funky. Okay, that's not bad right there. Let's just do a quick before and after comparison. Before or after, you can see, look at the teeth first. You see how I've whitened them up. They look a lot, a lot better. Um, you want them to still retain a bit of yellow to have a, a natural color. Um, they're not sparkling white by no means, and you could do a much better job in a in a application um, that is dedicated to this task. This is in Vegas, so it's not a, not bad for what you already have in Vegas. And now let's have a look at the face. You can see that yellow cast on the face, on and off. So what I'd now do is I'd go in and tweak it a bit more to to try and get things a bit smoother. I think I could smooth out parts of the teeth, but that's not bad. And that gives you a sense of how to use the secondary color corrector to whiten teeth. Um, you could create a second track and a mask around the top track if you want to isolate things just in the tooth area and just feather that mask. Um, and yeah, but if the lighting's good, if there's no yellow cast on the teeth, it should not be too much of a problem. Though occasionally the same color that you have in your teeth may be in other parts of the image, in which case you would have to use a second track and a mask. But there you go, I hope that helps. Another thing that you can do with the secondary color corrector is to only show, you can isolate and only show one color or two colors or however many colors you want. You can desaturate everything and only show one color to get that Sin City-like effect or that Schindler's List effect. And that's exactly what I did in my last short film. I showed only the color red and if you do decide to do that, if you decide to show only one color, if you show red, just be very aware that red is very close to skin tones. Red, orange, yellow, it's very close to skin tones. So if you're going to isolate and only show that color, it's going to be more difficult. If you use blue or green, it's going to be a lot easier to isolate and show that color if you have people on your scene because blue and green are much further away from skin tones. So for the movie that I shot, I had to do a lot of rotoscoping to get clean masks for much of the footage uh, because there was a lot of spill, of red spill, and some of the spots I could, I could get close using secondary color corrector, as I'll show you now, but I often had to do rotoscoping. Okay, so here we are once again in Sony Vegas Pro, and I want to have a look and see what else you can do with the secondary color corrector. It's really great because with the secondary color corrector, you can make a color mask honing in on one particular color. And with that, you can affect that color without affecting other colors, or you can remove all other colors without removing that color. So it's a, it's a really powerful tool for, for effects work and for color grading, color correction, all kinds of things. So to show you what I mean, I am going to affect my shirts, my blue shirts only over here. Now this shirt is not very well lit. It's full of shadows. It's um, not too far away from this green. It's not a great example. But just for, um, as a way to show you what I mean, we will work with the shirt right now. So let's grab color corrector secondary from the effects window over here and drag it onto our footage, bam. Okay, and same deal, 
we go to select effect range over here and, and grab a sample from my shirt over here. I'm going to grab a sample right here, which seems to be the color that most of my shirt is right here. Okay. And now to see exactly what we are working with, we go to show mask. We click this so we can see exactly which color we are going to be honing in on. And now we don't have much yet, so we have to go to limit luminance and um, pull the low slider down. And you can see more of the shirt popping up now. The high slider up. Okay, even more. Down to limit saturation, same deal. Low down, high up. Okay. And you can see we're missing a whole bunch of the shirt, and that may be because I'm honing in on a particular shade of blue. So we have to increase the width of my color mask so that we can effectively look for more shades of blue. So that's right here, width. And as I open this width up, you're gonna see the shirt, more of the shirt's gonna be affected. And that's great. We, we're getting a lot of the shirt. Okay, now you don't wanna go too far because once you go too far, you're going beyond blue into green and into other colors. And you want to affect that blue only. And in certain cases, you want the width to be very, very small because you want to affect a certain tone or a certain shade, rather, a certain shade of blue, not, not anything other than that particular shade. So depending on the case, you want the width to be um, s smaller or wider, usually smaller, but in this case, we have many shades of blue and no other colors, so we got the shirt. Okay, it's not great. You can see there are some shadows, which is, which is right, but it's a bit noisy. Let's smooth it out a bit. Yeah, we don't want to smooth it out because we already have um, too great of a width. So you really you just play around with the, the sliders until you get the best you can. Um, and yeah, under the circumstances of a badly lit shirt, I think that's the best we can do for now. I could get better, but let's work with this. Okay, so uncheck show mask. And now let's play around with my shirt. Okay, just to show you that we're affecting the shirt only, let me first desaturate the shirt. Bam, black and white. Let me do the opposite. Bam, super colorful. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's change the color of the shirt. So right up here, rotate U. So just to review, I went to the saturation. I slid it all the way up to give the shirt a boost of saturation. And now I'm going to change the color. Here we go. You can see the shirt is now purple, red, yellow. So you can, you can change the color of your shirt or, or any particular color in this way. So it's quite fun. You can play around with this and you can get um, some, some fun results. And yeah, in Vegas, you can have lots of fun. You can even keyframe this if you wanted to and, and change the color through time. And you can have this, this crazy color changing shirt. Maybe you're hosting a, a psych trance video or something and you want to have this crazy psych trance color, color vibey psychedelic uh, shirts. You, you could do that if you wanted to. I don't know. Who would really want to do that? But hey, you you have that as an option. So let's see what we got. Another thing that you can do with the secondary color corrector is to only show. You can isolate and only show one color or two colors or however many colors you want. Okay, so you can okay, so you can see um, as as I'm talking, my shirt's changing color. Um, so you can do all kinds of crazy things. And by the way, if you want to do the Sin City thing, all you've got to do is bring the saturation down to zero and then click on Invert Mask. That way, you remove every color except for the color of the mask being the blue of my shirt. So that's how you get the Sin City effect. Now in this case, the blue is not very clear. In, in order to correct that problem, all I would need to do is take another instance of Color Corrector Secondary, drag that onto my footage, and then repeat the process. Select effect range, click on my shirt, show mask, exactly the same thing. And this way I can first create the sensitivity effect, and then secondly, I can boost the color that, I'm that I am leaving in the footage. So I'm doing the same thing again. Okay, good. So let me undo that. So as you can see, I have a shirt left in blue, but it's just not very clear. So by creating another instance of secondary color corrector after the first, I can now boost the blue of that shirt. And I can also affect the blue of that shirt while leaving everything else in black and white, as you can see here. 
So I've got a purple shirt, everything else is in black and white. I've got a cool sensitivity effect. Just one more example real quick. Let me play around with this green screen. So let me take this one off, bam. Bring a new instance of color corrector secondary onto my footage, bam. Select effect range, bam. Let me grab this green screen, show a mask. Okay, so we want the whole green screen. Bring the low down, bring the high up. Same thing with limit saturation, low down high up okay we got too much of we got some white in me we want to bring the low back up a bit okay clean that up all right and we got some noise over there so let me play with the width a bit there you go perfect okay great so we can uncheck this now and now watch the back of the green screen i'm going to make it super saturated bam we have a super saturated green screen and uh, and this actually might be a lot easier to key. Um, so one thing you could do, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't actually done this before keying, but but this could potentially help your key. Um, maybe not, but it's it's a tool that you could play around with if you if you need to have uh, more saturation from your green screen. But you can do all kinds of things. You can do the same thing. You can change the color to go with my crazy color changing shirt. But just. It's the same concept and it's very important to be aware of the tool so that you can use it in any situation that you may need to use it. Okay, so that's it. Secondary color correct to Sony Vegas. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for listening to my rambling. I hope I didn't go on for too long. And please, I would be very appreciative if this was useful, if you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, lots of stuff coming up in the future, I'm working on lots of film projects, have cool videos in the works for you thanks again for listening have a great day or night and see you next time ciao for now bye